Welcome to Nine News Plus. I'm Chris Bianchi. As this year comes to a close, we wanted to look back at some of our favorite and most memorable stories from 2022. First is a story about our own chief meteorologist. Kathy Sabin was diagnosed with skin cancer in May. She had two surgeries in July and used her experience to encourage others to get checked as well. First of all, I think my main question for you, Kathy, we're really happy to see you back here. We really appreciate you um, being back here in the building. Um, how are you doing right now? I feel good. Um, it was a little scary coming back, just not being here. You know, you kind of feel a little out of sorts. I'm hoping I remember all my passwords to the computer. Um, but I also just feel a little different and I feel like I look a little different. I'm only a month in to what will probably be a four or five month process. So I'm happy to be back and just happy to be able to say thank you to everybody who has been so gracious to me and so reached out. With that, if you walk us through your skin cancer journey, um, how it came about, how you discovered it, and where you are here today. Um, let's see. Well, I mean, the dermatologists in the state will tell you that having yearly skin checks should be part of your yearly, mm -hmm. you know, checkup. And because I'm a Coloradan, and I, like many Coloradans, love the outdoors, I do get my yearly skin checks because I ski, I hike, I bike, I spend time outdoors. Um, it was a routine dermatology appointment where on the way out the door, I said, what do you think about this age spot on my nose? And she saw something she didn't like and sent me for what they call a punch biopsy to see if it was what she thought it was, which was a basal cell carcinoma. I couldn't see it with the naked eye. She saw it. And that's eventually what led to the surgery. But the surgery, my understanding, Kathy, is that what was supposed to be perhaps a, a shorter surgery turned into a long one, right? Right, because initially I think we just thought it was one little spot and they would just kind of cut that out and sew it up. But I think because of the location on the side of my nose, it was mm. complicated for them in terms of moving skin or grafting skin or the size of what the incision might be, we didn't really know. They told me there would probably be two surgeries and that's what ended up happening. Um, the first was a Mohs surgery where they go in and they will take what they think is the skin cancer look at it under the microscope, and then come back to you an hour later. If the margins are clear, you're done. They sew you up or they move you to the plastic surgeon. In my case, it took three cuts to get, um, and three hours to get all of the skin cancer out. And during that process, they found a second one um, up between my eyes. So yeah, so they say that skin cancer is like an iceberg. Like what you see on the tip is not what lies beneath, which can be deep and extensive. An iconic Colorado restaurant is undergoing a major renovation. In August, we got a peek at what Casa Bonita may look like when it reopens next year. Outside, we can see our beloved iconic Casa Bonita with a pinker paint. But on the inside, where the Mexican Fiesta-themed universe once thrived, images show areas gutted, empty, and hollow like a sad sopapilla. Fear not, fans. Hundreds of pages of plans and blueprints outline a big focus on keeping Casa Bonita's spirit with more than 12 million in renovations. Let's dive in. The pool that holds 48,000 gallons and is 13 and a half feet deep will get new steps with artificial rock to match the original. It seems the kitchen and the bathrooms will undergo the most changes with a focus on accessibility. New ramps and a vertical lift are planned. Outside, plans show a new fountain with LED lighting. Back inside, modern lighting, new speakers, projectors, and security cameras will cost $1.3 million. And some relief here, Black Bart's hideout won't be messed with too much. The main focus seems to be giving Casa Bonita's overall body a good repair with new guts behind the walls, like an overhaul on plumbing, new HVAC systems, and electrical. We are from Germany, Berlin, Düsseldorf, from all over Germany. Even with it shut down, people like these guys come from all over the world to take a gander at the grandiosity of Casa Bonita. When we were on the highway we, and we saw the, the top of this building and we saw, all right, that could be it. We were like little boys, you know. Matt Stone and Trey Parker, the creators of South Park, bought the restaurant for 3.1 million last year. But it's clear from these documents they are spending about four times that to fix it all up. And was it really worth it? Hell yeah! <laughs> no word yet on when Casa Bonita will reopen, as everyone now wonders if the food will improve. Homemade burritos today? No, we don't need burritos, thank you. I said homemade burritos. 
Oh, yeah. She makes them, I sell them. All right, but we're not, not hungry, we're just tourists. Take the yeah. opinion of the random burrito guy who showed up during our chat with our German friends. That's the worst place to eat. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> In what appears to have been a preview of the team season, the Broncos stadium caught fire in March. It was apparently caused by work being done during the offseason. This is how it started. A couple of seats on fire around Section 333 at Empower Field. Witnesses say it only took a few minutes for that fire to spread and send up that huge cloud of black smoke above the stadium. And this is a look at how it's going now. Most of Empower Field is okay, but there is quite a bit of damage in that part of the club section at the stadium. Well, our cameras caught the scene a little bit before 2.30 this afternoon. You can see that smoke rising from the stands. So different from the scenes we normally see, of course, at Empower Field. More than 70 Denver firefighters rushed there. They were able to get that fire under control. From outside the stadium, well, you have to wonder what was going through the minds of many drivers on I-25 when they saw the smoke billowing out of the stadium. And even people downtown were sending up the, the pictures as the smoke continued to get worse. Well, Denver Fire was right there. They gave us a look at what they faced once they got up to that section. Construction was underway in that area when the fire started. And some of the flames reached right up to the Ring of Fame, all the way down to the tunnels leading to the concourse. Sky and Iron got to the scene just as the fire was nearly out. You can see the crew still working on some of the hot spots with the hoses. They had to pull all the way out into the stands. Several rows left behind a melted mess after today. And if you look above, well, you can see some of the legends. Some of the Broncos' names from the past will also need to be replaced. Dan Reeves, Jason Elam, Champ Bailey, and some others had their names on the Ring of Fame singed during today's fire. 9 News reporter Luis De Leon is outside the stadium live for us. And Luis, we're learning more on what could have started all this. Alex, Tom, our Broncos insider Mike Kliss is reporting that according to a source, the Broncos were having enhancements done to the East Club Lounge seating area when it appeared some metal work may have sparked. It's important to note we are still waiting on more information from Denver Fire. Speaking of which, those fire officials say that the fire itself was in both the suite area of the fourth level in the stadium also a section of the seats on the third level caught fire there too. Denver Fire says the big billowing dark smoke that you could see from pretty far away was in part a result of the type of plastic that the seats were made of, saying the material could produce a lot of black smoke. The sprinkler system was working, but it was not enough to get out in front of the fire and control it. For 96 years, the Echo Lake Lodge and Restaurant sold knickknacks, pies, and more at the top of Mount Evans. It closed this October when the owner's lease wasn't renewed. Life is full of twists and turns, whether you're winding up 14,000 feet to Mount Evans or going to see the beauty that surrounds Echo Lake as leaf peeping season begins. The staple of the mountain, Echo Lake Lodge. Look at this building. Look at this restaurant. I mean, there's not many like it anywhere. The lodge is historic, logs coated in Scott's liquid gold, windows and doors ancient but working. It's the place, you know, and then next it's the people. People like Bill. Uh, I'm kind of the uh, oldest member of my family business now. He has made this place special for those who come from all over the world. The knickknacks are special. I mean, if you visit any of the national parks, you can have a visitor center and then you can have a gift shop and I'll, I'll tell you where the people are. They're in the gift shop. A tiny gift shop with every nook and cranny filled with memories to be taken home. Thank you very much. Thousands, thousands in the, and it changes. It's the same for staples, the t-shirts, the coffee mugs, the keychain. Items Carl's family has provided for generations. Well, 57 for my family and it's also been here since 1926. His grandmother bought the lodge in 1956 from the Broadmoor Hotel. At the time, she was also running the Crest House at Pikes Peak, the other 14er. 99 years of my family being on Pikes Peak making those donuts. That's until it burned in 1979. And it just sits as a windblown viewing platform now. 42 years later, Echo Lodge is the latest family business to close. Denver Mountain Parks decided not to renew its lease after 57 years. Caught us completely off guard. Uh, I had already ordered all of my merchandise for the season, about $300,000 worth. And uh, it, you ordered early and you ordered heavily because of the supply chain issues. And he still tells visitors. Come on up, bring your lunch. <laughs> 
We'll have hot chocolate. We'll have donuts. The end of this era makes Carl reflect on what they gave to Colorado tourism. We've made a lot of people happy along the way. We've had a great life along the way, and it's kept our family together. It keeps the family together when you have a family business. And bringing people together for special moments. Story after story. I've been coming here since I was a little kid. I can't believe it's it's not going to be that anymore. This is the last restaurant my grandmother ate at, and this is the one she wanted to go to. For Carl, his routine of the last 57 years will change for the first time. In May, he'll no longer stand on snowdrifts to take down the shutters, among other things. Lighting the propane stoves and uh, getting the water going and setting up the store and all of these things. As life continues to throw this family twists and turns, he wants to leave those who kept this family business at 14,000 feet with this. I would just like people to know that I can't find enough staff to open my dining room and for all of those people who brought their grandmothers, who brought their family up to look at the leaves and always had lunch at Echo Lake or always had a piece of pie at Echo Lake. I am so sorry and I'm heartbroken that, <clears throat> you know, that we can't do that this year for you. It hurts. And finally, in March, Congress took a significant step toward making daylight saving time permanent. The Senate passing the Sunshine Protection Act. But what would that actually look like in Colorado? Here's my report. There's an obvious pro, which would be that our sun sets are much later in the day. Your drive home from work will be in the light, but you're driving to work. It's going to be weird waking up in the morning and it's completely pitch black. Hmm. The switch to permanent daylight saving would make our mornings essentially look like this. The sun wouldn't rise until after 8 a.m. from late November to early February, with the latest being around 820 ish. But the pro you got no more of those 430 sunsets. The earliest sunset of the year would come in early December, and that would be about 535. Thanks for taking a look back with us and have a happy new year.